I'm Christopher Marks, Assistant Professor in Organismic and Evolutionary Biology, and my lab studies the evolution of microbes. We evolve populations in the laboratory, and we use them as a way to study both fundamental questions in ecology and evolution, as well as trying to understand how the bacteria themselves actually grow. So what is my organism? I use Methylobacterium extorquens, kind of a crazy long name for a bacterium that lives uh, on the surface of plants. And so it's not a pathogen, it doesn't make anything sick, it doesn't make the plants uh, sick at all. We can take a plate with just methanol to eat as a food source, which most bacteria cannot eat, and we can stamp a leaf, for example a clover, into it, and you end up getting this kind of constellation of little colonies. Characteristically, almost all Methylobacterium are pink, they make these carotenoids. So how do we do experimental evolution? It's fairly simple. We take whichever strain it is that we want to evolve, and we introduce them into fresh media. Then we allow the cells to grow up until they've exhausted all of the food that we've provided for them. Then we take a small amount of the culture after they've finished growing and we transfer it into a new flask and they grow up again. And then every so often we take what didn't get transferred and we keep it and we put it in the minus 80 freezer and label that. As new tools, new ideas come up, you can go back and pull them out and actually compare your living ancestor to your current evolved strain how much faster they grow, how well they compete with the ancestor, as well as we can use sequencing to determine what mutations have actually occurred through time. The important thing is you need to be able to distinguish the two different types. We can take advantage of the modern tools in, in biomedical sciences and we put in a fluorescent protein actually taken out of a jellyfish from uh, Puget Sound and put it in our ancestral strain so that they glow when you shine a light on them and the other type doesn't. We also have taken advantage of another kind of modern tool. It's called a flow cytometer. It's the same kind of thing that would do like blood counts uh, when you go to the doctor. And it can run about 50,000 of our cells past a laser beam in about 40 seconds. And so we can get very accurate counts very quickly and thus be able to measure even just very small fitness differences. In terms of being able to look at the actual outcome of evolution, we're now at a point in time where we can actually use sequencing and we can resequence the genome of a bacteria to find where the actual mutational changes that underlie the advantages and fitnesses that, that have occurred. And once we identify these mutations, we can directly move an evolved version of a gene and replace an ancestral version of gene in the original strain. And that way we can test the effect of any of the mutations that we find and thereby be able to determine which of these mutations actually were beneficial and account for their increase in fitness and which of them just kind of hitchhiked for a ride along with the others. One of the big questions now in experimental evolution is what the potential is to actually be able to predict adaptation before it occurs. We're trying to use mathematical models of the cell that we think are under selection and try to predict how much tweaking any of the given parts would affect the cell's output in terms of how fast they grow and thus how well they compete. And then looking in our actual populations and see to what extent do we find mutations in the same genes that the computer models would predict. I think it would have tremendous importance to be able to make some sort of projection in terms of what's likely to occur next. In chronic infections, or, or cancer is actually a great example. Cancer basically is adaptation. It's mutations occurring to cells within our body that allow them to grow faster than others. It's identical to the work we do. I think it's tremendously important, and it's the same sort of conceptual background that can be established by studying bacterium in the lab, can, can apply to a wide number of, of various situations.